didn't have any wheels, so I used dice. Good morning, my friends. It's your friendly neighborhood medical student. My name is Ulysses Lay, and this is my first video. Cheers. We're low on budget, so we gotta use it all. I'm gonna kill somebody. I said lobby. So today I'm gonna be answering the question that no one has asked me. Can you learn medicine with anime? And we're gonna find out. We watched today an anime called Cells at Work. I will not be pronouncing the Japanese name because I can't. And uh, we're gonna watch it together, the best parts, and I'm gonna pretty much give you my input on how accurate it is and hope you learned something today. Fact. I have no idea. Alright, that's a fact. Sure. <laughs> We got some Dragon Ball Z. All right, that's for sure, Predator. Excuse me. The hero has a right. Oh my God! <laughs> this is not PG-13. This meal. All right, all right, all right. This is a neutral feel, right? So, I thought this was gonna be some light stuff, but no. So before we go any further, uh, let's talk a little bit about like uh, cells and where they come from. So let's think of like one big father cell, right? And he gives you two different cells, two different families. A myeloid stem cell and a lymphoid stem cell, right? Now, when thinking about these two different families, I want you to think of myeloid. That friend you got that you just don't like going out with because he's always starting fights. Spontaneous, he's aggressive, and he's fast with things. Sounds a little bit like my mom. That friend, Billy, I'm talking to you there, he's a part of the innate immune system. Neutrophils and eosinophils and, basof and basophils and all these fills, fillies. And then uh, they're just quick responsors. Now, versus lymphoid cells, that's like your strategic friend that you kind of envy a little bit. And he just faces a problem. He learns how to deal with it the next time he deals with it instantly because he has memory. That's lymphoid cells. Usually when we're talking about lymphoid cells, we're talking about B cells, T cells, plasma cells, and so on and so forth. All right, germs, like, it could be a little more scientific here, please. Uh, you know, we have bacteria, gram positive, negative, we have viruses, we have protozoas, parasites, uh, mycosis, funguses. Alright, so I think she wants to go to the lungs, so I'm assuming she's carrying carbon dioxide and she's in the venous system, obviously. A little simple information I thought was real cool before this. We saw that she ran into a valve. Something I did when I started studying medicine. Because the arteries are pressurized, and then essentially that's what allows them that uni, unidirectional flow of blood versus v, uh, veins. Now, veins don't have pressure, but they have doors, and these doors uh, don't, don't allow the, uh, the, blah, the blood to go back and essentially help that direction of blood flow. Now, these doors can break and crack, I guess, and then that gives pathologies like venous insufficiency and other things. So, that's just a good little sip of information. That I'll Funny thing about her being lost is like, I'm just like, if you put me a block away from my house, spin me three times, like, I will never go home. Never. What are you doing in there, creep? No, I'll leave it. You know what you saw. What happened there? Ah, it's a capsule. Okay, so. Oh, it says bacterial capsule. Okay, so now you have an idea of who it is. This is a bacteria, and capsules are things that bacteria have to avoid being phagocytized, which means eaten. And that's pretty much the way neutrophils attack. They eat you, and they use something called respiratory burst, which creates radicals in order to kill you. These are pneumococcus. All right, so we're talking about strep, pneumo, strep pneumonia. We're talking about a, a gram-positive bacteria that has capsules, for example. When I want you to think about pneumococcus, I want you to think about a janitor. Mopping the floor hard at work, you know, he's a little evil, he's thinking of his next uh, attack on, this, on the village. And essentially, MOPS is the acronym that we use to remember this, right? So M, so M is meningitis, O is otitis media, P is pneumonia, and S is sinusitis. And he is the most common cause of these pathologies. <laughs> ah, talking about meningitis, wow, they're trying to teach. They're dropping some knowledge. Receptor. All right, so receptors, I'm glad they actually mentioned it because it's very important. That is the way most cells communicate and are able to actually have language. Um, particularly him, there's actually many different receptors and actually way, pretty complicated the way it all works. I think, uh, particularly him, for example, he has, I remember C5A is uh, one of the things that like attract him. And uh, cytokines like IL-8 and other things like that, but like that's not really important. But that's how they talk. All right, so these are playlists. So once you have damage to like a vessel wall, the endothelial tissue, 
uh, the playlists come and they aggregate all together, little kids playing and with a little bit of food in the gin and they create this small, very light plug, right? Momentary. And that's called hemostasis, uh, primary hemostasis. And then they wait for secondary hemostasis, which is the coagulation cascade. Oh, this is calcium. That is a very small detail. Uh, it's pretty much used for the last stage of se secondary hemostasis. Notch. Helper T cell. So we talked a little bit about his family. He's a lymphoid family. I like that he's like a chief, captain, sheriff, capitan. Because like that's how you learn it when they're teaching it to you. That he gives orders around. So. And then this is his other half brother. Right? This is his brother. This is also from the lymphoid family. These are like special ops. Like the, he looks bad because he is bad. They take care of virus infected cells. They take care of neoplastic cells. They take care. Of, they're part of. They're involved in the graft donor rejections, and uh, they are bad. Pretty much in T cells, like they can give you CD4 and a CD8. CD4 is the chief that we previously saw, and a CD8 is him. It's not a toxic uh, cell. Fact: They're alpha hemolytic, which means they uh, are involved in the reduction of hemoglobin, partial reduction. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay, this is straight from a saw movie for sure. Alright, uh, apologies to Stray from Predator. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is a Monster X Hunter? Oh, 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 what's good? Oh, 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 okay. Press, press, press. Okay, I don't know what's going on here. I don't know if they're alluding to club cells or macro. It can't be macro just because they, we saw them earlier. Alright. If they're gonna go for a romance, they gotta hurry it up. I don't know if he knows this, but if he takes too long on nap, he's never gonna wake up. <laughs> Neutrophils have like a lifespan of a couple hours to day, I think. And then she has like 120 days, which is not a lot, but hey, it's a lot more than him. So if they're gonna get busy, they should do it quickly. Ah, uh, so he's been, he's been sneezed out. <laughs> Overall, you know, I enjoyed it. I thought that they had a lot of snippets of little information that I was very surprised they included that was it's very accurate. You know, they have little parts where they actually want to educate the viewer. And I thought that was very nice. I think the animation looked good. I think the story of the first episode was okay. I think it's just introduction of the character, so I'm not going to give it too much of a hard time. Uh, to answer the question, can you learn medicine with anime? Uh, you can learn a couple things. I think you can learn a thing or two. You won't be diagnosing anyone soon. You won't be saving a life. Maybe. I do think that, like, there, in order to understand a lot of this, a lot of the little nuggets of information there, you kind of need to know a little bit of medicine, or at least like it, in order to like do some Wikipedia, or you gotta be an active Googler. Nah. So now I gotta do the classic YouTube outro, right? If you liked the video, share it with your friends, family. If you didn't like the video, share it with your enemies and people you don't like. Point is, you share it. Like, let me know if you want me to make more. I'll try to make one Sunday, and if you don't want me to make more, I'll still probably try to make one Sunday, anyways. <laughs> Um, we use some ice in it. <laughs> Whoa, way more than that. <laughs>